Racism is not slavery and slavery is not racism. The two are not even synonymous. Yes, Africans were brought across to the Americas and to the New World, to the West, and enslaved. And racism, which was created by the system, manipulated this idea of slavery and the two became merged. But slavery, if you understand what it is or what it was before, it was commercialized and made into a business or a fetish in the West. It was a practice that was a practice with its particular ethics. So we won't get into slavery and discuss that in much detail because we're not discussing that today. We are discussing racism. And the approach that I believe should be taken to tame that beast called racism. Because racism, which is part of the system, a tool of the system, a creation of the system of authority, cannot be eliminated. There is no way you can take out this idea of racist or racial tendencies from the system because it is part of the system of authority. It was created to place one sector, one group, the elites. Not necessarily all the elites because there are some elites who do not subscribe to this idea of racism. But as long as there is authority trapped into a system and you are part of that authority, you have that privilege which differentiates you from the other. That's in a sense the working mechanism of racism. Racism is prejudices or extreme prejudices. And whenever there is a prejudice existing, racism can raise its ugly head. Now it is manifested mainly black versus white. I do not know what that means. I know we belong to one human race. And people call me black at times and I sometimes respond to it, but I don't go about black beating my chest saying I'm black and I'm... No. Yes, of course. Based on systems, conditions and categorization, I am seen as black. And some other person might be seen as white. But that's, where they, that's the trap. That's where they, they have us there. If we continue defining as black and white and fighting as black versus white, we have some problem because authority does not know black or white. Authority knows control and rule. And there are people who are black in authority and are worse than some people who are white and in authority. So, again, we will not get too much into that. I wanted to focus on one aspect, the Black Lives Matter matters and the attitude, the behaviors, what is done right now in the present debate. And we, if we're not very careful as a people, might just find ourselves in the receiving end of that debate again, lose that debate, lose momentum. And here's why. Who is the leader of this movement now? To rekindle an appreciation and a respect for people of color. No one that I know of. Yes, George Floyd died and we have moved some ways in terms of creating this awareness, this, this realization that this system is uneven. But it is as if every person is a king and everyone is doing their own thing. The governor of Washington declared the boulevard at the front of the White House in Washington Black Lives Boulevard. The people who are protesting went right next to it and put another big sign called defund the police. What does that mean? You are provoking the system unduly when you do those things. And then you have now to explain something that you should, you should never have to explain. You can say reform, you know, but when you say defund, it is giving ammunition to the people who are in authority. And they are going to use that as a tool against you, run an election against you, and hopefully win that election against you again and continue to suppress you for another four years. And the cycle continues. So I think in our quest to call for neutrality, equality, respect, we should not be over-exuberant. I think there must be a, a, a connection, a combined message in this quest for, for respect and, and equality. 
And there must be a definitive system that leads this protest, leads these activities. Everybody wants to say something. The other day I saw uh, uh, no shopping day on Tuesday in three days notice and people just saying whatever they wish to say. There must be organization. I think black are too divided on everything and everywhere too is the same principle everybody's a star everybody knows better than everybody else and today we have i mean it is good that people are taking getting involved but the first thing that should happen seeing that this thing has catch a fire around the world there should be an establishment based in america maybe with conferences the world over there should be a major black lives conference including australia and all other countries, England, Germany, you know, working on the one agenda. And the goal is to foster understanding, education, and to, to, to preach a oneness around the world that would once and for all probably tame the beast of racism. But the way we are going, especially if America be, continues to be the ground zero of this fight, I suspect that fight is short-lived. Yes, it's 20 odd days now since the protests are going on, but um, I'm seeing certain things down the line which, if ways are not amended now, this Black Lives Matter protest, George Floyd might have died in vain. Well, I don't say he did, might have, because that's a perfect opportunity that his dying has created for humanity to do things right, do things together for a change. But alas, I think... Well, the boat has not sailed yet. Let's see what happens with that general elections coming up in America in November, and then we will speak again. That's my Sunday talk.